Welcome back. Well, it's the first day of school for some teachers and some students in the area, and this means the official end to summer vacation. While some youngsters spent their summers at summer camp, other teachers spent their summers at camp as well. And it involved a day-long activity created by the Da Vinci Discovery Professional Development Program. We had a group of um, about 65 teachers out here on the Lehigh River uh, with the Wildlands uh, Bike and Boat Tour, and uh, these teachers are taking part in a two-week intensive summer workshop on earth sciences as part of the Da Vinci Institute, which is a three-year professional development program that we uh, run in conjunction with Cedar Crest College and Allentown School District and Bethlehem School District, Nazareth, Easton, Bangor, and uh, the diocese. And, um, they're all elementary or middle school teachers, and they're here to learn about uh, earth science concepts and how to apply those in their classroom, how to teach uh, about the scientific method, scientific inquiry, and um, how to make better use of the inquiry curriculum that they have in their classrooms. The day we visited, the teachers were learning about the Lehigh River. Today we got into canoes at, uh, at Canal Park in Allentown, and we went down the river from there here to Sand Island in Bethlehem, and we stopped once along the way to look at uh, a big island, Sterner's Island, and we were looking at, uh, at the river itself, at the rocks along the river, at the vegetation, and also at uh, some of the wildlife. And part of, so one of the big purposes today was to help teachers understand the natural world that's here in the cities of Allentown and Bethlehem, and uh, what a resource that can be for them in their classrooms and uh, what a, how important it is to help students, even those who live in the really urban parts of those cities, to connect with that natural world. This year, in an effort to get even closer to nature, the center partnered with the Wildlands Conservancy. Each year has a different content focus, and this year when we, did, when we had the earth science focus, we knew we wanted to uh, make rivers a big part of that. Watersheds and rivers is a big part of Pennsylvania's science standards, and we want to make sure that the teachers are well prepared to, to teach for the standards, to teach for the upcoming science test. And so uh, Wildlands has this wonderful program where they take uh, students on the river uh, and expose them to the natural environment, and they learn a little bit about the river, and they learn about history. And so we, we were partnered with them this year to make this, uh, this day happen so that we could show our teachers what that program has to offer and also have them learn a little bit about the river. Before they ventured into the river, they first learned about canoeing safety. When the children or the teachers as they did arrive in the beginning, we immediately just welcome them, greet them, and then we uh, assess them with PFDs, personal flotation devices, or life vests, however you want to say it. And then we also give them a paddle, a a propulsion device to get them down the river and then we after they're all ready we actually bring a boat out have them practice carrying one usually we put four people per boat because the boats are pretty heavy I want to say they're about 40 to 50 pounds um, so I'll put four people on the gunnels to work them to carry it then we give our safety speech and the safety speech um, just tells them basically how to maneuver a canoe the sh different types of strokes the front stroke the back stroke um, if you're in the front you should be just using the front front stroke you're the power you're the end when you're in the back, you're actually the steer or the rudder, or you use a shark fin, which kind of turns the boat. Um, we talked about communication. We also use certain paddles, paddle signals when they're out there if we want them. If there's something we need to alert them to, we go left, right with our paddles. We also put one up in the air to raft up. Maybe there's something we need to tell them. Maybe there's a strainer out. On the sides of the banks, there's strainers. These are where the trees are, shopping carts, rocks, stuff that we want them to stay away from. And the reason it's called a strainer is because it will let, let the water run through, but it will not let their boat run through. So we try and keep them away from that. Additional precautions included wearing a personal flotation device in case something went wrong. The life jackets, well, we don't like to call them life jackets because technically they don't save lives. We call them PFDs. Um, and the reason it's so important is because if they do get flipped out of a boat, there needs to be some way that they're not just going to immediately duck to the bottom. And sometimes people get caught underneath the boats and those PFDs will bring them up to the surface. So if they do get caught underneath, the PFD will lift them out from under the boat. So it's super important that they wear them at all times because at different times the current is flowing extremely fast. Sometimes it's moving way too quickly for anybody to even maneuver around so they must keep them on. This particular trip sets sail without any problems. 
today we actually were very lucky. We didn't have any real tip overs. We had one girl step out of the boat, which caused the boat to kind of rock, and her partner stood luckily to save it. But um, every once in a while when we're down here, we have kids that are being careless. They're splashing with their paddles, and when they're splashing with their paddles, it causes them to offset the balance of the boat. And yes, they do tip. So what we, what our job is, is as safety, is to actually be there to um, keep them from not panicking, not freaking out. They have to go down the river. We tell them nose, toes up. So basically when they're flowing downstream, their feet will hit them before their head will, or if their butt hits the bottom, then they can eventually stand up if the current's not flowing too strong. What we also do is when their boat tips over, they need a way to get all the water that's out of their boat. So we'll actually do a boat over a boat where we pull the boat up onto the safety cruise boat. And once it's pulled up onto the safety cruise boat, all the water is able to run out and leak out so then we flip their boat over and then we kind of help the kids get back in the boat or the kids push their arms down on the sides to balance it so they can get back into the boat. Um, there are a bunch of kids who panicked today. There weren't a, mo Most of the teachers were pretty calm, pretty productive and what happens with the kids when they're panicking we kind of make sure they're with a teacher or make sure they're with an older person to keep them from freaking out. In order for the canoe trip to go smoothly, the boaters needed to learn more about teamwork. Teamwork is probably the hugest thing. If you, in the front and the back, can't communicate, you're not going to get down the river. Um, the back person is like the brains of the, the system, the unit. He's the guy who tells the front person where to go. The front person's the power. They don't need to be necessarily intelligent. They're the ones who just power the boat. They constantly front paddle, constantly front paddle. That back person is strong. He has to tell the front person, pat on the left, pat on the right, because if not, they're going to be zigzagging throughout the entire river. Definitely a lot of communication needed to uh, be in a canoe. It's not just the front person, it's the back person too. And communication is key. Today we learned how to work together to um, to canoe down down the river. Um, we had to work as a team. We were the second place in, um, but we had to work as a team to get in here and, and make sure that we were communicating with each other on how to canoe and how to steer the canoe. Teamwork was part of what the teachers learned. Today was a great combination of what we've done so far. We got to look at the rocks as we were floating down and, and see which ones and try to figure out which ones are sedimentary or igneous. Or, and we, <coughs> we use what we've learned so far today um, to discover and, and make discoveries as we were canoeing down the river. So it was very, very neat um, to, as a combination activity. I learned how to turn the canoe because I didn't know how to before. So I'm a, I'm a good back person in the canoe. Well, we had a great time on the river. We've been studying a lot about um, river, river banks, vegetation, um, rocks, geology. And we had a great time um, canoeing on the river and just being out with nature and realizing how important it is to preserve all this. The teachers are helping the environment by educating their students about what they learned during their voyage. Last year was my first year um, with the program and I absolutely loved it. And um, I brought a lot of things back to the classroom and I'm going to do the same thing this year. So it, it's been great. The teachers volunteered to be part of this program that meant giving up part of their summer vacation. This program is voluntary. All these teachers have volunteered to be here. They, um, they participate because they're interested in science teaching or, or because they want to know more about science. They know that, that it's an area where they maybe want to do a little more work with their kids and they haven't had a chance in the past. Um, they want to know what the current, uh, current thinking is and when they want to learn a little more about the science content. Uh, in, many, in some cases, the districts have requirements for teachers to have a certain number of hours of independent professional development. So for these teachers, that counts. Uh, we're an Act 48 provider, so uh, all these teachers will be getting their Pennsylvania Act 48 hours, their required 150 hours um, of professional development. This, this program counts toward that. And um, some of them are also enrolled in a graduate course at Cedar Crest College, where they'll be able to get graduate credit for participating in this and then for going back to their classrooms and, and doing some work in their classrooms and writing it up. Um, so, so yeah, they come, they come for a whole lot of reasons, but, uh, but all of them are volunteers. The teachers say by spending part of their summer as the student, their experience will help them enrich their lessons. I wanted to do some hands-on activities with earth sciences and figure out how to incorporate that in my classroom so it's more hands-on so the students get a more hands-on approach to science rather than just in textbooks. I decided to participate because uh, science is such an 
integral part of what children need to learn. They need the hands-on experiences that's going to help them excel in reading, writing, math, and social studies. Actually, this is my first year, and some of my peers had come the two previous years, and they spoke so highly of it, I thought, well, I'll give it a try. Plus, I really wanted to learn about more about science as much as I could so I could bring it to the classroom. Bringing nature into the classroom isn't just for those who teach science. I'm an elementary ed teacher, so we teach all the subjects, and math and science are always closely linked. You could use this for anything. Uh, we're learning a lot about rocks, so we could uh, identify the different types of rocks and then maybe use that for measurement, because we teach a lot about measurement, inches, standard uh, and centimeters, metric, so you could use it that way. Science can also be integrated not only with math, but also with literacy. So every subject can also be an interlinked and integrated in some way, shape, or form. There's so many things to do and so little time to do it. Integration becomes a big part of your day. They gave us a lot of hands-on activities to use in the classroom, and we just adapted to the grade level that we teach. And we plan to go back and share it with the other teachers in the building and try to hopefully get other people on board because it's, it's a great program to get involved with. We get free field trips to the Discovery Center. <laughs> and we get scientists to come in and talk to our class. So yeah, it's all really worth it. Overall, this year's program proved to be successful in educating local teachers about the area's natural environment. I recommend it for everyone, teachers, non-teachers. It's a great way to get out and enjoy what's around us in the Lehigh Valley. This program is part of the Da Vinci Discovery Center's goal to establish a professional learning community for science in area schools. We'll be right back.